Oh no, I think we're having some sort of tech issue. So let's try this again. I hope Lauren sees this. We um, just started our IG live a few minutes ago with Deborah. And um, I think either I lost connection or Lauren lost connection. I'm not sure what's going on, but let's give this a shot again. I'm not sure what happened. Is it my Wi-Fi or yours? I'm not sure what happened, but hopefully um, we can get this back on track. Sorry about that. Is it my Wi-Fi or yours? I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, I'm not sure. Am I live on? I don't know what you count them on now. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like my other one. It's all good. So <laughs> Sorry about that, Deborah. I mean, you know, I feel like once um, every couple of weeks, Southold Optimum has to give us a little bit of a jolt to wake us up. Well, so I here we are. Never fun. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so you were telling us you were in Rhode Island. So you grew up in Rhode Island and you moved around and you ended up in New York with a jazz musician boyfriend. That's where right. we, I think we left off, right? Yeah. Yes. In, in a dark room. And your dad had a dark room. Oh, a dark room. room. We were in there a dark we room with your dad. <laughs> We shall emerge from that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, what I was uh, leading to was back in the day, we had things called hobbies. And so photography was always a hobby and a great passion. Um, it isn't what I had studied, but it was self-taught and loved it. So when we were in New York, um, my, my boyfriend at the time, and still my very best friend, he got hooked up with a record producer that he went to school with and he was given his first job to go on the road with trumpeter Chet Baker. Oh, wow. And I, excuse me, was given my first assignment to photograph Chet Baker. So at that time I only knew how to use black and white film and so when they asked to see some color, I had a kit of oils, photo oils, and I hand colored the photograph. Oh my gosh. So that just really dates how far off this is. It's That's actually so cool. in when... the mid seventies. But um, just to fast forward and bring us to the present, you know how one thing leads to another, one relationship takes you to something else. And that really is the beauty and the joy of starting out you know, those connections, excuse me, mm, that was delicious. Sorry. <laughs> and so just to fast forward, I lived in New York City for over 40 years, but sort of on and off. We moved to, when I had a child, at some point we moved to Sac Harbor, we lived there, then we moved to Nassau County, but I maintained my studio in the city. So there was a lot of moving around, but my work was always based in New York City. And so I've been photographing for, I guess, a little over 40 years. So I only started out shooting musicians. But as I said before, one thing leads to another. So Rolling Stone hired me after a while and gave me a contract. So that led to more diversity in my subjects. And I started photographing uh, artists, actresses, actors, uh, authors, Perfect. politicians, that eventually led to doing book covers of a lot of really iconic uh, people. So I've done early Bill Gates to Barack Obama to uh, a few weeks ago, Hillary Clinton. So it's been very varied, varied and very fascinating career, which I'm always grateful for. And that's sort of the work career. So, can I ask you a couple questions? Oh, uh, yeah, please. Uh, so, who was your favorite person that you photographed? So, and again, there's been obviously different elements of that, but right. I've never had a favorite, and, and the answer to that is, and not to sound whatever the word would be, but everybody offers something. There's always sometimes yeah. it's it's to the left, sometimes it's to the right in terms of positivity, but there's always challenges involved. And so each of them comes with a story, which leads me to a PBS special that is currently running called Icons. And it's, I think, episode number five is tonight. It's a, PB, it's a, a, a British production company. And what it is, is they interviewed, 
photographers who photograph musicians are known for that. And it's fascinating and it's brilliant. And I do tell a number of stories <clears throat> in episode one and four. <laughs> and um, you can fast forward to get to those. But uh, I highly recommend it if you're a music fan, if you're a photography fan, if you're a music history fan. It's really quite fascinating. They break it down into like album covers and concerts and it's really wonderful so i'm just uh, i was gonna say pimping now but yeah that's what i'm doing she's plugging it plugging it can that we... was not the word yeah <laughs> okay can we just rewind to the very beginning where you mentioned about hobbies i'm curious as to how did you end up with a camera in your hand i i understand how you got involved with photographic musicians you know with the connection through your boyfriend but how did you end up with a camera in your hand to begin with so that's a really lovely question. And my father always had a camera and, you know, it was all Kodachrome when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And so I became accustomed to his snapshots, but more than that was the photo albums that were in the house. I would pour over these amazing photos and one of the ones that, one of the series that influenced me the most was pictures of my mother. My mother was born in 1925 and she was an identical twin. Oh, wow. And there were a lot of studio shots of the two of them that were very Diane Arbus-esque. Okay. So if you don't know who she is, Google. you should Google her. Diane, A-R-B-U-S. Very surreal imagery. And the photos were very captivating to me, very odd at the same time. And so I was sort of fascinated between those images and just the snapshots that my dad took. But mostly, as I grew a little older, it was Friday's delivery of Life magazine. And that became a love of what I didn't know at the time, which was journalism, black and white. And the growing up in Rhode Island, the Providence Journal Bulletin had amazing photography in it. And I was just really attracted to that. And so my dad got me a camera. And so I was age 12 when he taught me. There was a dark room down the basement that he had set up for himself and then for his son. And then I got interested at age 12. So that's how it started, really. But I was not ever someone who just snap, snap, snap. When I was 12, I would photograph my friends and we would set up these little scenarios. So it was really a, a means of just self-expression with a little theater attached to it. A little theater, not spread. <laughs> that, that, is, that is a huge... I mean, one of the biggest differences between film photography and digital where you don't, you know, where, where you're not wasting any film, if you will. And, you know, we just like, I mean, I don't even want to compare it to iPhone photography where we just click, 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 delete, delete, delete. There was a whole right. thought process in figuring out the right shot before you click, right? Yeah. So the only thing I can say about that is I don't know if everybody click, click, clicks. Yeah, I agree. But I know that I don't. I use it as a camera. But I, I can't remember the article, but somebody talked about the over usage of the click, click, click. And usually there's really very little there. Um, but, but that I teach at the International Center of Photography. And really what I'm trying to teach is looking, you know, because that's what training your eye to take everything else out of it and just look and that is what can be missing and that is what i emphasize in my classes and so the class that i teach it's about imitating other photographers but i start from the turn of the century portrait photographers and they imitate it which requires a lot of focus and attention and it's a wonderful class hoping that through that one develops their own style. And where do you teach again? The International Center for Photography. It's in the city, ICP. And uh, I'm doing now strictly Zoom classes. I mean and, and I'll tell you why. So because we don't want to keep talking about COVID. Why? 
I have people from all over the world. And that is what's so intriguing. And you share with others very different visions. So I love it. That's so exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. You must be able to see so much more because they're from everywhere. Yeah, it's really interesting. People go about it differently. I had a student from Russia, uh, Guatemala, uh, Barbados. And everybody brings something different to it. So it's really lovely. I want some pictures from Barbados. <laughs> She's amazing. That, that sounds so lovely. It's certainly something I need in my life because... I'm guilty of one of those click, click, click people because I don't really see myself as a photographer. But my husband, for example, is a photographer and he does exactly what you're describing. He will take his phone and stare at something. And, you know, if, I, if he's taking a picture of me, it takes him 10 minutes. And I'm like, by now I could have taken 100. But he's <laughs> like, you don't need 100, you need the one good one. And I think right there, what you're describing is a difference between an artist photographer that knows what they're doing and someone like me that's looking at the beautiful nature going nature is doing all the job i can just click a sunset it's perfect no matter what you do but i love that that you're you're bringing attention to that i'm definitely going to check into your classes and see if that's going to help me um, well, we, we have so much going through our heads and i think for the last year and a half so much taking up so much space you know and so this requires letting go of that so it's a good exercise even if you don't snap the shutter <laughs> <laughs> so how did you trans um pivot because that's the word of 2020 let's be honest oh, okay. uh from photography to your new medium of art well so it goes back to relocating here so in january of 2019 i purchased a little cottage in South Hold, still had the home, uh, the apartment in the city. But uh, when COVID hit in March, um, I locked down here. But because we were spending a lot of time out here in, in January in 2019, I kind of, in some ways, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know what to do with myself. And I reminded myself that my best friend, my whole life had been my camera. So if I traveled, alone, which I did quite a bit in my 30s, you know, around the world, it was scary. Well, we're not every, I'm not that adventurous, but it was scary. But my camera was always my companion. I never felt really alone with it. So I reminded myself of that. And I wasn't, you know, I'm not a street photographer. I don't go up to people and ask to take their picture. And so what was I going to do? And I was walking in Greenport. And I took a little detour off Main Street, and I found that glorious boat yard. Mm -hmm. I don't know the name of it. With the met rusted structure. I'm like, well, I'm home <laughs> now. This is amazing. Looks a little derelict. That I can identify totally with that. And I saw all these boats up on pilings. Is that, I, think, I don't know what you call it. Like, They're piling. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And um, I just started looking closer at the part that would have been in the water. And I, I just saw all this, these art pictures. I just saw within the peeling paint, the closer I got to it with my camera, I, I saw a frame around it. So I started photographing it. I started going to different uh, boat yards. And that was the beginning of a series that I have recently hanging at touch goods of these close-ups that look like abstract paintings i think or prints yeah the, the first time i ran into you deborah was at touch goods yes uh, where you were trying to hang some of the stuff and i was like what i mean at first honestly i, I have to confess I had no idea who you were because I was just happened to be there and you walked in and you guys were talking. And then later I was looking at the art and it is incredible. And just the amount of detail, because I got to see a little behind the scenes thought process of where you hang it, what pairs with what, just the, the whole design aesthetic. It's just, I, I love all of it. It was amazing. Oh, thank you. No, it, it's really been nice. And, um, but just to keep it local, I also have about 20 of my music photographs. I think the earliest one is from the 70s, uh, late 70s. Um, that's hanging in Greenport. 
at um, Popsicle and Thin, and um, I highly recommend if people are music fans or photography fans that they come and take a look at that. It's a lovely, lovely new shop, really fun, and there's photographs all over the walls. Um, I I also just had the pleasure of meeting Stephanie. I know she, um, I couldn't join yesterday, but you had a little reception there yesterday. Yes, um, we did. It was lovely. Heard. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you can go and have your own private uh, viewing. Viewing. I, I, you have to come with me all the time when those words are <laughs> um, At Popsicle and Finn. It's a clothing store. It, it's got a, a lot of different things, a lot of different designers, and beautifully curated yeah. by Stephanie and her sister Elise. It's really fantastic. I highly recommend it. Yeah. No, it's a beautiful shop, and it definitely, the artwork just works so well in that shop, so I'm not surprised. So that's yeah. a fairly great synergy. Yeah, it's really, really fun. And, as well as Touch Goods, which my home now looks like Touch Goods. So. Oh, yeah. It's hard, <laughs> it's hard not to walk into that store and not walk out with, like, one of everything at least right? exactly yeah i know and i just love the versatility of what she offers there too and her energy yes i mean yes. she's so passionate about it really i see her as an artist as well mm -hmm. which she is yeah but you you she's been really inspiring both of those women as business women have really helped me a lot they're so positive and so smart and I do owe a lot to them, I must say. I also think that the great part about being out here on the North Fork is just that community yes. and that ability to really just find other like-minded souls. Yes. And I feel like you probably give so much and not even know it, and they do it the same in return. And I think that it's just, it's one of my favorite parts about being out here. It's just, it's finding connections like this. Because yeah. I know you and I chatted when I was starting Story Petals. And I remember <laughs> describing to Deborah, I mean, it literally had hit me that day. And I, and Deborah's like, are you enjoying it? And I said, I was, I get the same high and, and excitement that I got from selling a hundred thousand dollar job as I did connecting with someone over a custom order for flowers. And um, I remember you saying that, that you felt the same with being out here and, you know, finding a new medium that inspired you in a way that just spoke to your soul and i think it's really exciting and also the north fork offers that in the beauty of both the nature but also the people yeah and yeah. i think it's just relationships like this that are just what reaffirms why it's so wonderful to live here yeah it's a really big shout out to strong creative and my buzzword would be generous women yes agreed everyone yeah. there sunita and i were chat sorry sunita i'm gonna let you talk no, I was gonna say, it's like <laughs> Common, it's a common theme that comes up week after week, week after week, no matter who joins our conversation. Um, one of the beautiful things that, you know, it's sinking in for me uh, to being on the North Fork is that most of the businesses, if not all, are small business owners. So you're yes. not really walking into a giant store where it's a corporation. You're actually meeting Noreen and you're meeting Stephanie and you're meeting Lauren and you're meeting Tracy. And they're all smart. And in this case happen to be women only, but all smart, accomplished women in other careers that have perhaps pivoted. We have to drop that word at some point. <laughs> Pivoted into fitting in their their passion into the new North Fork life, and and I find myself a little bit on the cusp of that because for the last ten years we've been back and forth between New Jersey and South Hold, and now for the last it's only been two weeks I think maybe not even three, um, you know full time here, and I just love hearing um, all the transformations and the transitions of how the North Fork just sort of soaks you up. It gets its roots and claws into you. And it's amazing to see and hear from women who found their passion that fits. You love, you both love what you're doing in a gorgeous setting like, you know, like the North Fork. It's amazing. And it comes up week after week after week. Yeah, it's just a reoccurring theme. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So, so so you're in you're in South Old, you said, and you did have you been to any of the other boatyards, the one in South Old itself? Um, by yeah. Summers? Well, I, I did forget to give a big shout out to Anne Vanderberg from Greenport Brewery, and that is a faux pas on my part because <laughs> Anne looked at one of my photographs of the boats, 
and we had a show at her gallery in Greenport. And wow, that and it was during COVID. And I will not brag about the success of that exhibition during COVID by appointment only. But she did it so beautifully, so tastefully. And I also think it, because it was COVID and you had to go by appointment, myself included, it gave you time to be with the pieces. And I feel like, I mean, I've been, I worked at the Guggenheim for many years, so I've been to plenty of art openings. And, but to be with a piece one-on-one -on -one and allow it to speak to you is such a rare privilege to have that I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah, it was very personalized and Anne worked really hard on promotion. You know, it was, people just really responded to it. Her efforts were just out of the park. And, you know, she started the ball rolling. She fell in love with the images. So we're going to do a talk at the brewery later in the year when everybody's off vacation. And I'm going to do a presentation of my career of the, mostly the music, and then we do a Q and A. We're going to have a band there, and that's something for everybody to really look forward to. When things get quiet, and we go, now what are we going to do out here? Well, we've got that. We've got that coming up. No worries on that. Super exciting! I'm yeah. excited to see your retrospective. Yes, live. I, yeah, I look forward to that. You also have something coming up at Touch Goods. I know you already have your art hanging there, but there is some sort of a reception or something at Touch Goods as yes. well. Yes, that's the Sunday, I believe it's the 22nd. And yes, yes thank you so much. She is coming with me everywhere. <laughs> I'm her people now. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren has the magic touch. <laughs> so Touch Goods, <clears throat> excuse me, has opened a loft in the basement. And there's a big celebration for that. And I have photographs hanging on the walls. And uh, there's going to be some munchies from Touch of Venice. And it's going to very excited about that. Well, I feel like, so we talked about how we ask everyone each week their favorites of the North Fork. We already know now your brewery favorite. Absolutely. Um, so do you have a favorite farm stand that you love to go to here on the North Fork? Yes. Deep Roots. roots. Deep <laughs> I can't ask her the question and answer it for her. <laughs> I feel like Deep Roots is like Oprah at the Emmys. We have to remove yes. them from the checklist because yes, exactly. All right. also, also, let me make sure I get the right number of keys. KK. Yeah, KKs. Yeah. <laughs> both of them. They both do incredible work. I mean, I was just at Deep Roots the other day and I bought the eggplant. It's wonderful. So absolutely, they should show up every week in our list. Now, you photograph exactly. both. Do you also photograph nature? And do you do sunrises or sunsets? Or just as a person, would you prefer to wake up and watch a sunrise? No, or watch no a sun I... I I do not photograph sunsets. Uh, is this when I say I go to bed fairly early and get <laughs> up early? Yes, so, so that you want to be me. But I, I, I'm working on another project, which I, I won't talk about yet, but it has to do with what I find here and can find elsewhere. So my focus is usually on that. I don't do a lot of, uh, I leave it to Patrice to do the beautiful, gorgeous, I don't know when she goes to sleep, photographs of this community. Yeah. That is Patrice's, yes. I don't know how, help me with the words. She's, she's amazing. I'm, I'm lost at words. Nobody she does has, it better. Nobody does it better. I don't know when the woman goes to sleep. That's all I but, can say. But she also has a way of capturing everyday places that I find myself at. And I look at them through her photographs and I go, I was there. I didn't see it that way. Right. That's but, why I don't do it. I have the same reaction. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm very lucky. I'm lucky to have a photographer in the family. So. I'm thrilled. <laughs> and she's amazing. So very true. Um, I say nice things about you every week, Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> on camera. On, on camera. camera. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> um, and then what else do we have? Uh, we, restaurant. Uh, the Frisky Oyster. But the one where you sit down and have an yeah. amazing evening. Not, 
I like the other place where you shuck. No, go but, shuck it up. Go back. Yeah, go shuck yourself. But <laughs> what I really like is an, a special occasion going there. I like being catered to. I will pay for that. I swear. But I, I think it's the food is lovely there. So that's my favorite. Yeah, awesome. Did awesome. we miss any, Sunita? No, I just, I'm going to do Tracy's line. So you, um, if you had to sum up in one, in one line or one thought, um, what you love most about living on the North Fork, what would that be? I know, I'm okay. thinking, this could take a while. How much time do we have? As long as you want, as long All as right, you want. The, probably no one ever says this. I think the quietness. Oh. It's very soothing for me. I mean, maybe I'm lucky because... That's good. Yeah, I love hearing the train and I live right by the, near the bay. It, and maybe it's from living in noisy places, but it's very soothing and comforting for me. Is that weird? No. Oh, okay. It's good. definitely the first time we've heard that answer, though. Oh, okay. okay. Look at you being original. <laughs> um, so now that we're at the end of our, our chat, is there how can people support Deborah Feingold? I would love if people would go on my Instagram account and follow it because I've become really obnoxious. But since the documentary has aired, aired, that's Cranston, Rhode Island accent, <laughs> has aired, uh, I'm trying to reach a milestone with my likes. You know, you can be an older person and still really want to rock that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's pure ego. But please do friend me, like me, all, that, all that business. Um, so Instagram is just my name, I believe. Yep. Deborah Feingold. Grab that before anybody else took it. <laughs> and Facebook is maybe the same thing. So Deborah Feingold on Instagram. Go like, follow. Um, also, we've got Touch Goods. Um, her show is there. Uh, Popsicle and Finn in Greenport. Feel free to go see some of her rock and roll art there. And um, soon coming out, I'm sure Anne will be promoting it like crazy at the brewery this fall or winter, um, a retrospective of all of your rock and roll. Right. And the stories history. that come with it. And the, those are the best parts, yes. right? Yes. Exactly. Well, I'm super thrilled you joined us. Thank you for thank having you. me. This thank you. Thank pleasure. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just loved hearing the backstory and I can't wait to um, see all the art in person. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to try to be there at the Touch Goods event. Um, it's on my calendar. So I'm looking hey, forward. look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, Bye Anita. Thank you so much. Bye.